Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 36 of the course on statistics and probability. Students, you will recall that in the last lecture, I discussed with you in detail the confidence interval for mu and the confidence interval for mu1 minus mu2. In today's lecture, I will begin with the confidence intervals for p and p1 minus p2 and then we will go on to a very interesting and important topic determination of sample size. So let us begin with the confidence interval for p the proportion of successes in a binomial population. As you now see on the screen for a large sample drawn from a binomial population the confidence interval for p is given by p hat plus minus z alpha by 2 into square root of p hat into 1 minus p hat over n. In this formula as in the case of the confidence interval for mu z alpha by 2 will be equal to 1.96 for 95 percent confidence and it will be 2.58 for 99 percent confidence. Of course, if we want only 90 percent confidence, then z alpha by 2 comes out to be 1.645. Students, aye is formula pe thoda sa gaur karte hain. It is p hat plus minus z alpha by 2 into the square root of a certain quantity. And according to what, what I explained in the last lecture, this is the statistic plus minus z alpha by 2 into the standard error of our statistic. Shayad aap ko yaad ho, when I discussed with you the sampling distribution of p hat, I did convey to you that the standard error of p hat, in other words, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of p hat was equal to the square root of p hat into q hat over n. And this is exactly what we have in the expression that I just presented. So, you have that the overall format hai, that is very similar to what we were discussing in the last lecture. Let us now apply this formula to an example. As you now see on the slide, let us look at a survey of teenagers who have appeared in a juvenile court three times or more. A survey of 634 of these shows that 291 of them are orphans one or both parents dead. What proportion of all teenagers with three or more appearances in court are orphans? The estimate is to be made with 99% confidence. In order to solve this problem, the first thing to note is that n is 634 and that is a large sample size so that the formula that we are discussing is valid in this particular situation. Next, we talk about p hat and considering being an orphan as success, p hat comes out to be 291 over 634 and that is equal to 0 0.459. As such, q hat, which is the proportion of failures in the sample comes out to be 1 minus p hat and that is 1 minus 0 0.459 which is equal to 0 0.541. Now substituting all these values in the formula of the confidence interval we obtain 0 0.459 plus minus 2.58 into the square root of 0 0.459 into 0 0.541 over 634. Of course, we put the value 2.58 in place of z alpha by 2 
because of the fact that we want 99% confidence. Now, solving this expression, we obtain 0.408 as the lower limit and 0.510 as the upper limit of our 99% confidence interval for P. Students, आइए इस रिजल्ट को जरा इंटरप्रेट करने की कोशिश करते हैं ये है प्रॉब्लम जिसमें वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट टीन एजर्स हु हैव अपीयर्ड इन द जूवेनाइल कोर्ट थ्री टाइम्स और मोर और हम ये देखना चाह रहे हैं कि व्हाट प्रोपोर्शन ऑफ देम आर ऑर्फन्स हमारा जो रिजल्ट अभी हमने निकाला दैट इज फोर्टी टू फिफ्टी दिस इज द नाइन्टी कॉन्फिडेंस इंटरवल फॉर पी the true proportion of orphans among teenagers of this type ab note kijiye ki ye is interval ki ek particular width hai 41% to 51% aur bahut high level of confidence pe ye width hame mil rahi hai sample size tha 634 which is a quite a large sample size agar hum chahe ki ye width aur kam ho to hame kya karna chahiye we can reduce the level of confidence and that will make it a, a little narrower kyunki 99% bahut zyada um, high level hai to shayad hum kahe ki even 95% is all right and if we do that then of course our z alpha by 2 will become 1.96 and in that case when we compute we will get a relatively narrower confidence interval let us now look at another point important point और वो ये है कि इस हर इस वाले में 634 हमारा सैम्पल साइज था लेकिन जनरली आप किस तरह इस्टेब्लिश करेंगे कि सैम्पल साइज लार्ज है इतना लार्ज कि ये जो फार्मूला है ये हम अप्लाई कर सकें स्टूडेंट्स uh, शायद आपको याद हो कि जब मैंने आपसे ये बात कही दैट द बाय नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कैन बी अप्रॉक्सीमेटेड बाई द नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन तो उसमें एक रूल ऑफ थम्ब मैंने प्रजेंट किया था and that was that if both np and nq are greater than or equal to 5 then we can apply the normal approximation to the binomial is particular example mein p to zahir hai ke hame malum hi nahi hai p hi ko to hum estimate karna cha rahe hain lekin jo p ka estimate hai jo hame abhi apne sample mein se mila agar usko hum istemal kare और n को 634 रखें और उसके बाद ये जो रूल ऑफ थम मैंने दिया उसके ऊपर अप्लाई करें तो साफ जाहिर है कि इस केस में बोथ एन पी हैट एंड एन क्यू हैट विल बी मच लार्जर देन फाइव एंड सो दिस पर्टिकुलर फार्मूला कैन बी अप्लाइड लेट इस नाउ कंसिडर एन अदर एग्जाम्पल आफ्टर अ लॉन्ग करियर एज अ मेम्बर ऑफ द सिटी काउंसिल मिस्टर स्कॉट डिसाइडेड to run for mayor of the city the campaign against the present mayor has been very strong with large sums of money spent by each candidate on advertisements in the final weeks mr scott has pulled ahead according to the polls published in a leading daily newspaper but in order to check the results Mr Scott's staff conducts their own poll over the weekend prior to the election the results show that for a random sample of 500 voters 290 will vote for Mr Scott develop a 95% confidence interval for the population proportion that will vote for Mr Scott can Mr Scott conclude that he will win the election aapne dekha ki ye kafi interesting problem hai and quite a real life problem iske andar ab sabse pehli kya cheez hum dekhe ki what is success uh pichla jo problem tha usme bhi of course success was the first thing that we had to realize and in that one of the fact that the teenager is an orphan that was being regarded as success because i have already explained to you that success is a technical term yahan pe voting for mr scott is success and 
voting against Mr. Scott is failure. If this is the definition of success, then of course it is very easy for us to compute p hat, the proportion of successes in our sample. And as you now see on the screen, since 290 people have favored Mr. Scott out of 500, hence p hat is equal to 290 over 500 and that is equal to 0 0.58. Of course, 0 0.58 is a point estimate of p, the true proportion of people in the population who will be voting for Mr. Scott. Now, as far as the 95% confidence interval for p is concerned, we have the formula p hat plus minus z alpha by 2 into the square root of p hat into 1 minus p hat over n and substituting all the values our interval comes out to be 0 0.537 to 0 0.623. In other words, the 95% confidence interval for p is 54% to 62%. Students, aapko yaad hai ki iske andar ye question bhi tha that should Mr. Scott think that he will win the election? Ab dekhe, jo point estimate aya, that is 58%, aur jo 95% confidence interval aya, that is from 54% to 62%. Ab ye jo figures hain, they are higher than 50%. Or agar 50% se zyada log vote karenge, to zahir hai ke he will be winning the election. To iska matlab ye hua ke on the basis of this survey that his staff has conducted on their own, he can reasonably conclude that he will be winning this election. Let us now consider another example. As you now see on the screen, a group of statistical researchers surveyed 210 chief executives of fast-growing small companies. Only 51% of these executives had a management succession plan in place. A spokesman for the group made the statement that many companies do not worry about the management succession unless it is an immediate problem. However, the unexpected exit of a corporate leader can disrupt and unfocus a company for long enough to cause it to lose its momentum. Use the survey figure to compute a 92% confidence interval to estimate the proportion of all fast-growing small companies that do have a management succession plan. Students, iske andar, we are interested in computing the proportion of companies that do have this plan in place. Or, hum 92% uh, conference interval construct karna chahte So, the first thing to note is that if in our diagrammatic version of this uh, situation, we are putting 92% area in the middle, it means that we have to place 4% area to the left and 4% to the right. So, is case may z ki value, yani z alpha by 2 ki value kya aegi? As you now see on the slide, according to the area table of the standard normal distribution, z alpha by 2 comes out to be 1.75. Hence, we can use this value to compute our confidence interval. The formula, of course, is p hat plus minus z alpha by 2 into the square root of p hat into q hat over n. Now, we have n equal to 210 and p hat equal to 0.51 as we noticed a short while ago. Hence, substituting all these values in our formula, 
the 92 percent confidence interval comes out to be 45 percent to 57 percent. All right, now that we have discussed how to construct the confidence interval for P, let us proceed to the confidence interval for P1 minus P2. Jis tarah maine last lecture mein aapke saath mu1 minus mu2 discuss kiya tha. Isi tarah, of course, in many situations, we may be interested in determining the difference between the proportion of successes in one particular population and a similar proportion in another population. Misal ke taur pe, suppose we are interested in determining the difference between the proportion of smokers in Karachi and the proportion of smokers in Lahore. So, we will be talking about P1 minus P2, where 1 stands for Karachi and 2 stands for Lahore. Or isi tarah se, kai or interesting situations where we are interested in the difference between proportions in two populations. So, as you now see on the screen, for large samples drawn independently from two binomial populations, the confidence interval for P1 minus P2 is given by P1 hat minus P2 hat plus minus Z alpha by 2 into the square root of P1 hat Q1 hat over N1 plus P2 hat Q2 hat over N2. Aapne dekha ke ek dafa phir iska pattern bilkul pehle ki tarah se hai. The point estimate plus minus Z alpha by 2 into the standard error of the point estimate. Is case mein hum estimate karna cha rahe hai P1 minus P2 ko aur iska point estimate kya hai P1 hat minus P2 hat. Aur is quantity mein hum kar rahe hai plus minus Z alpha by 2 into the square root of some big quantity and this some big quantity square root is the standard error of P1 hat minus P2 hat. Dekhye, bunyadi pattern ko agar aap samaj lenge, to aapko kisi kisam ki dikkat pesh nahi aayegi. Of course, I could have started deriving all of them for you, but I would not want to do that. I would like you to develop a sense of the basic pattern without necessarily having to go into the lengthy mathematical derivation. Let us now apply this particular formula to an example. As you now see on the slide, in a poll of students in a large university, 300 of 400 students living in students' residences, that is hostels, approved a certain course of action, whereas 200 of 300 students not living in students' residences approved that particular course of action. Estimate the difference in the proportions favoring the course of action and compute the 90% confidence interval for this difference. Now, in order to solve this problem, First of all, let us denote by P1 hat the proportion of students favoring the course of action in the first sample, that is the sample of resident students. Also, let P2 hat be the proportion of students favoring this particular course of action in the second sample, that is the sample of students who are not residing in students' residences. Then, according to the data that we have available to us, P1 hat is equal to 300 over 400, and that is 0 0.75. Also, P2 hat, which is 200 over 300, comes out to be 0 0.67. Therefore, the difference in the two sample proportions is 0 0.75, minus 0 0.67 and that is 0 0.08. Now, 
the required level of confidence is 90%. Therefore, Z alpha by 2 is 1.645, and hence our 90% confidence interval for P1 minus P2 is 0 0.08 plus minus 1.645 into the square root of 0 0.75 into 0 0.25 over 400 plus 0 0.67 into 0 0.33 over 300. Solving this expression, we obtain the lower limit of our confidence interval as 0 0.023 and the upper limit is 0 0.137. Rounding these, we can say that the lower limit is 2% and the upper limit is 14%. All right, let us interpret this result. We are saying that the difference between the two categories of students, this difference in the proportions lies somewhere between 2% and 14%. And this statement is being made on the basis of 90% confidence. Now, you have seen that this is a very wide interval. That you have one edge is 2%. That is, the difference is very small. And the other edge is 14%. Or, and that is not very small. So, now you can see here, students, that here we have level of confidence bhi itna high. Nahi tha. It was not 99% or 95%, it was only 90%. And we have our interval hai, that is slightly wide. This means that these sample sizes are 400 and 300, although they are so large, but still they are not large enough for us to have a narrow interval, as narrow as we would have liked in this particular problem. So this is the kind of situation that we are dealing with all the time when we are doing interval estimation. Look, different formulae develop on the basis of scientific reasoning, mathematical reasoning. But it can't be said that we can cover every kind of thing in it cover kar lenge aur kisi kisam ki koi problem hume encounter nahi hogi. Zahir hai ki ye sara procedure jo aap study kar rahe hain, it is very useful in many situations, lekin jo is ke andar limitations hain aur jo problems hain, unki recognition bhi saath hi saath honi chahiye. Only then you will be able to apply these mathematical formulae and many other mathematical formulae in a proper way, in a real life way situation. All right, let us now start another very interesting concept and that is the concept of the determination of sample size. Dekhye, students, hum itni der se baate kar rahe hai regarding estimation and we are saying that the sample size was so much and so on. Aap ye sochiye ke agar aapne ek is kasam ki koi study khud conduct karni ho, so, the first question will arise that how large a sample should I take from this particular population? This is the first question and the rest of the things are the So, I will now present to you a method of determining the sample size if we want to achieve a desired level of precision with a desired level of confidence. And I will present it to you first with reference to the estimation of mu. As you now see on the screen, in deriving the confidence interval for mu, we have the expression, the probability that x bar minus mu lies between minus z alpha by 2 into sigma over square root of n and z alpha by 2 into sigma over square root of n, this probability is equal to 1 minus alpha. Now, this statement implies that the maximum allowable difference between x bar and mu is z alpha by 2 into sigma 
over square root of n. Students, ab phir se aapne wo confuse honne ki koshish shuru kar di hai, I am sure. But there is no need for that. Dekhye, hum ye keh rahe hain ke probability is baat ki, ke ye jo tease hai, this is lying between these two limits. Is baat ki probability 1 minus alpha hai. Ab ye jo do limits hain, jis ke darmiyan ye quantity x bar minus mu lie kare, ये तो वो एक्सट्रीम्स है ना जहाँ तक हम अलाउ कर सकते हैं कि ये एक्स बार माइनस म्यू इस एक्सट्रीम तक या इस एक्सट्रीम तक हो तो इस हवाले से हम ये स्टेटमेंट दे सकते हैं जो मैंने अभी दी एंड आई वुड लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट यू टू हैव एन अदर लुक एट द सेम स्लाइड दैट यू जस्ट सो द मैक्सिम अलाउबल डिफरेंस बिटवीन एक्स बार एंड म्यू represented by the modulus of x bar minus mu and it is equal to z alpha by 2 into sigma over square root of n. Now the quantity modulus of x bar minus mu is also called the error of the estimator x bar and it can be denoted by small e. Thus the error bound for estimating mu is given by z alpha by 2 into sigma over square root of n. In other words, if our level of confidence is 1 minus alpha and we want that the error in estimating mu by using x bar, this error should be less than e, then we need n in such a way that the following equation is satisfied. The equation E is equal to z alpha by 2 sigma over square root of n. Now if I bring square root of n to the left hand side and take E to the right hand side, I obtain square root of n is equal to z alpha by 2 into sigma over E and if I take the square of both sides of this equation, I obtain n is equal to z alpha by 2 sigma over e whole square. Students, ye jo formula humne develop kiya hai, aye isko samajhne ki koshish karte hai. It is n equal to z alpha by 2 sigma over e whole square. Iske andar jo components hai right hand side mein, zara inko dekhiye sigma, the population standard deviation and at the moment we are assuming that it is known. Uske ilawa kya hai? Z alpha by 2 or denominator mein E. Ab aap note ki jiye ke Z alpha by 2 or E dono aap ke apne control mein hai. Is hawale se ke Z alpha by 2 denote karega us number ko jo aap ke desired level of confidence ke mutabik hoga. Or E jo hai, the maximum error that you are wanting in your estimation process, ye bhi aap khudhi determine karengi. And this is the way we can determine this, the required sample size in such a situation. Lekin ek ahem question hai, ki sigma humne assume kiya ki known hai, but what if sigma is unknown? And obviously, most of the time, the population standard deviation is not known. Students, in such a case, we will estimate sigma by s and this s will be computed from a pilot sample. Jaysay aapne suna hai pilot study, a study which is prior to the actual study, ek choti si study jo pehle kar li jati. Ek pilot sample le lenge aur usse s compute kar lenge and we will replace sigma by s in this formula and find n. So, let us now apply this concept of determination of sample size to an example. As you now see on the screen, a research worker wishes to estimate the mean of a population using a sample sufficiently large that the probability will be 95 percent that the sample mean will not differ from the true mean by more than 25% of the 
of the standard deviation. How large a sample should be taken? In order to solve this problem, the first thing to note is that the error bound E, which is also the modulus of x bar minus mu, this is equal to 25% of the standard deviation, that is 25 sigma over 100, and this is equal to sigma over 4. Also, because we want 95% level of confidence, therefore, z alpha by 2 is equal to 1.96. Hence, substituting these values in the formula for n that we derived a short while ago, we find that sigma cancels with sigma in the denominator and we are left with 1.96 into 4 whole square and this comes out to be 61.4656. Hence, the required sample size is 62 and it is important to note that 61.4656 will be rounded upward because obviously the sample size cannot be fractional. Students, aap ye note karein ki yahan pe 61.46 jo answer aya to thoda sa ye kam tha 61.5 se. To aap keh sakte the ki according to the ordinary rules of rounding, isko round hoke 61 banna chahiye tha. But please remember that whenever we are determining the sample size by this process, we will always be rounding upward. Yani 61.46 to ek taraf, agar 61.1 bhi hota na, to we should not have rounded it down, we should have rounded it upward. Is liye ke hum thoda sa badha de sample size, to usme koi problem nahi hai. Lekin agar hum usko kam karenge, to jo hamara desired level of confidence ya desired error bound hai na, usme uh, problem a jayegi. So we would like to play safe and it is, uh, the process is that we should be rounding upward. All right, ye jo process mein aapko abhi diya with reference to mu, of course, a similar process can be applied with reference to the estimation of P, the proportion of successes in a binomial population. So, as you now see on the slide, the large sample confidence interval for P is given by P hat is equal to Z alpha by 2 into the square root of P hat into Q hat over N. This implies, according to a logic similar to what was presented a short while ago, that the error bound E is equal to z alpha by 2 into the square root of p hat into q hat over n. Therefore, solving for n as before, we obtain n is equal to z alpha by 2 whole square into p hat q hat over e square. And it should be noted that the values of p hat and q hat are not known because the sample, of course, has not yet been selected. Therefore, we use an estimated p hat, which we obtain from a pilot sample. Let us now apply this concept to an example. In a random sample of 75 axle shafts, 12 have a surface finish that is rougher than the specifications will allow. How large a sample is required if we want to be 95% confident that the error in using p hat to estimate p is less than 0.05? Students, shayad aap soch rahe ho ke this seems to be a very complicated situation. Again, agar hum step by step isko analyze kare, तो सबसे पहली बात ये देखें कि यहाँ पे हम p और p hat की बात कर रहे हैं। इसका मतलब है कि हम success और failure की बात कर रहे हैं। तो success तो हम उसी को कहते हैं ना, जिसमें हम interested होते हैं। यहाँ हम कह रहे हैं 
कि कुछ ऐसी एक्सल शाफ्ट हैं जिनकी सरफेस फिनिश जो है ना दैट इज़ रफर दैन वॉट इज़ एक्सेप्टेबल तो यही जो बात हो रही है ना दिस इज सक्सेस कि अगर वो रफर फिनिश है तो देन दिस इज सक्सेस एंड इफ इट इज़ ऑल राइट देन दैट इज़ फेलियर डू रिमेंबर सक्सेस एंड फेलियर आर टेक्निकल टर्म्स अच्छा तो अब बात ये हो रही है कि ये जो 75 फाइव एक्सल शाफ्ट का सैम्पल हमने सिलेक्ट किया उसमें तो 12 हैं इस कस्म की विच कैन बी क्लासीफाइड एज सक्सेस यानी जिनकी वो फिनिश जो है दैट इज़ रफ लेकिन कह हम ये रहे हैं कि अगर हम 95% फाइव कॉन्फिडेंट होना चाहते हैं कि वो जो एरर है इन एस्टिमेटिंग द ट्रू प्रोपोर्शन ऑफ द शाफ्ट विच आर रफर दैन दी अलाउड लिमिट उस ट्रू प्रोपोर्शन और हमारे सैम्पल प्रोपोर्शन के दरमियान जो एरर है वो जो फ़र्क है दैट इज़ लेस दैन और इक्वल टू ज़ीरो पॉइंट ज़ीरो फाइव तो फिर ये अगर हम चाहें तो फिर हमारा सैम्पल साइज़ क्या होना चाहिए आप कहेंगे कि ये तो एक्सप्लेनेशन ही बहुत ज़्यादा लंबी हो गई है लेकिन इट इज़ ऑल राइट एवरी थिंग इज अकॉर्डिंग टू वॉट वी आर वॉन्टिंग टू डू पहली बात ये नोट कीजिए कि ये जो 75 एक्सल शाफ्ट का सैंपल हम ऑलरेडी ड्रॉ कर चुके हैं ना इसे तो हम पायलट सैंपल रिगार्ड करेंगे और जो असल सैंपल हम आ, असल स्टडी जो अब हम इसके बाद करना चाहते हैं उसके लिए तो हम सैंपल साइज डिटरमिन करना चाह रहे हैं विद 95 परसेंट कॉन्फिडेंस एंड एन एरर बाउंड ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट जीरो हैंस एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन the p hat that we have obtained from our pilot sample is 12 over 75 and that is 0.16 also the error bound e which is the modulus of p hat minus p that has been specified as 0.05 also because we want to be 95% confident therefore Z alpha by 2 is equal to 1.96 substituting all these values in the formula that was presented a short while ago we obtain n is equal to 1.96 over 0.05 whole square multiplied by 0.16 into 0.84 and solving this expression n comes out to be 206.52 which upon rounding upward yields n is equal to 207 students aapne dekha ki maine jo baat pehle kahi wo validate hui yani jo pehla sample tha uska size tha 75 but that was the pilot sample that we drew in order to have an estimated value of p hat aur usko humne jab is formula mein rakha to hamara jo required sample size hai na for the actual study that has come out to be 207 to hum kam as kam 207 size ka sample draw karenge to phir hame error bound 0.05 aur level of confidence 95% milega कम अज़ कम मैंने इसलिए कहा कि अगर आप इससे भी ज़्यादा बड़ा रखेंगे तो फिर तो और भी बेहतर है योर लेवल ऑफ कॉन्फिडेंस माइट इंक्रीज और योर एरर बाउंड माइट डिक्रीज तो वो तो और भी ज़्यादा बेहतर हो जाएगा लेकिन आप यूँ कह सकते हैं कि जो मिनिमल रिक्वायर्ड सैम्पल साइज है टू हैव दिस मच कॉन्फिडेंस एट लीस्ट एंड टू हैव दिस मच एरर बाउंड एट द मोस्ट दैट मिनिमम डिज़ायर्ड रिक्वायर्ड sample size is 207 students aapne dekha ke inferential statistics kis qadar interesting hai you are able to draw inferences and conclusions about real life phenomena and about populations on the basis of sample data thoda sa data aap collect kar lete hain इन अ साइंटिफिक एंड प्रॉपर वे ऑफ कोर्स और उसकी बेसिस पे आप कंक्लूजन ड्रा कर सकते हैं अबाउट इंटायर पॉपुलेशन जैसा कि मैंने 
लेक्चर नंबर थर्टी वन में कहा था इन्फ्लुएंसल स्टिस्टिक्स कैन बी डन इन टू मेन वेज वन इज एस्टिमेशन एंड द अदर इज हिपोथिस टेस्टिंग अंडर द कैटेगरी ऑफ एस्टिमेशन वी टॉक्ट अबाउट पॉइंट एस्टिमेशन वन सिंगल वैल्यू दैट एस्टिमेट्स द पैरामीटर एंड नेक्स्ट वी हैव टॉक्ट अबाउट इंटरवल एस्टिमेशन जहाँ पे हम एक इंटरवल um, देते हैं विद लेवल ऑफ कॉन्फिडेंस नाउ स्टूडेंट्स वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द अदर वेरी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड इम्पॉर्टेंट एरिया ऑफ स्टिस्टिकल इन्फ्लुंस एंड दैट इज हिपोथिस टेस्टिंग वॉट डू आई मीन बाई हिपोथिस टेस्टिंग आई मीन दैट आई वुड लाइक टू टेस्ट a certain hypothesis that i already have in my mind dekhiye na estimation to wo situation hai na ki jisme aap yu assume kare ki hame pehle se koi idea nahi hai about that phenomenon and we are trying to estimate uh, mu or p or whatever it may be um jaise kehte hain na ki we are wanting to do that with an open mind pehle se hame kuch nahi pata aur ab hum Uh, based on the information that we have in the sample that we have drawn we are wanting to estimate an unknown quantity that we don't have any information about um students hypothesis testing on the other hand is this situation where we already have uh, an idea let me say a hunch um about that particular phenomenon For example, suppose that we are talking about um, African people, who I think we all would agree that they are generally very tall. So we might have this assumption in our mind that the mean height of the adult males of this particular African country must be at least so much. अब ये एक पहले से एक idea है हमारे ज़हन में कि भाई कम से कम इतनी तो ज़रूर होगी mean height. इस सिचुएशन में वी वुड लाइक टू टेस्ट दिस हिपोथिस बेस्ड ऑन सैम्पल डेटा हम उस कंट्री में से एक रैंडम सैम्पल ड्रॉ कर लें एंड वी मेजर द हाइट्स ऑफ दोज पीपल हु आर इन द सैम्पल एंड वी फाइंड एक्स बार अब हमारा जो एक्स बार है इट विल आइदर सपोर्ट आवर हिपोथिस और इट विल फेल टू सपोर्ट आवर हिपोथिस if our x bar is close to the hypothesized value of mu then of course we would like to accept our hypothesized value but if there is a a lot of difference between our x bar and the hypothesized value of mu then obviously we would not be inclined to accept our hypothesis so students ye jo maine aapse baat kahi This is the crux of the matter. हम देखेंगे कि हमारा जो सैम्पल डेटा है वो हमारे हिपोथिस को सपोर्ट करता है या उसके अगेंस्ट एविडेंस प्रोवाइड करता है लेकिन ये जो प्रोसीजर है इट इज़ अ वेरी मैथमेटिकल एंड अ वेरी साउंड प्रोसीजर बट इट इन्वॉल्व अ लॉट ऑफ स्टेप्स इट इन्वॉल्व अ फ्यू स्टेप्स एंड आई वुड लाइक यू टू कॉन्सनट्रेट ऑन वेरियस पॉइंट्स वन बाई वन हो सकता है कि आपको um, पहली अटैम्प्ट में सारे पॉइंट्स पूरी तरह क्लियर ना हों लेकिन अगर आप आहिस्ता आहिस्ता एक एक पॉइंट पे गौर करेंगे तो इन ये uh, कॉन्सेप्ट जो है इट विल बिकम क्लियर टू यू अभी जो मैंने बात की आपसे हिपोथिस की आइए अब इस बात को हम ज़रा फॉर्मल तरीके से एक्सप्रेस करते हैं एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन we first of all define the null and the alternative hypotheses a null hypothesis generally denoted by the symbol h not is any hypothesis which is to be tested for possible rejection or nullification examples of null hypotheses are the given coin is unbiased a drug is ineffective in curing a particular disease there is no difference 
between the two teaching methods. Students, you have noted that the three examples that I have presented, they pertain to situations that we may be interested in in real life. But these three statements that I have given, they were not presented in a very mathematical way. Generally, when we write null hypothesis, we will express it in a mathematical way. For example, ये जो पहला एग्जांपल था दैट दिस पर्टिकुलर कॉइन इज अनबाइस्ड इसको हम अगर मैथमेटिकली एक्सप्रेस करना चाहें तो हम इस तरह से लिखेंगे कि एच नॉट इज दैट पी इज इक्वल टू हाफ इसलिए कि अगर वो अनबाइस्ड है तो प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ हेड इज गोइंग टू बी हाफ एंड इफ यू आर रिगार्डिंग हेड एज सक्सेस देन ऑफकोर्स दिस प्रॉबिलिटी इज टू बी कॉल्ड पी एंड सो वी से P is equal to half. इसी तरह से, as you now see on the screen, other examples of null hypotheses expressed in a numerical way are h naught mu is equal to 62 inches and h naught mu is equal to 130 pounds. इन दोनों examples में से जो पहला example है कि mu is equal to 62 inches ये हिपोथेसिस पर्टेन करेगा टू अ पॉपुलेशन ऑफ वेमेन और हम ये कह रहे हैं कि हमारा ये हिपोथेसिस है कि इनकी जो मीन हाइट है दैट इज 62 इंचेस इसी तरह जो दूसरा है दैट वुड पर्टेन टू अ पॉपुलेशन ऑफ वेमेन अगेन आई कैन से एंड वी आर सेइंग कि इनका जो मीन वेट है दैट इज 130 पाउंड्स यानी ये हमारा नल हिपोथेसिस है वो हिपोथेसिस जिसे हम टेस्ट करना चाहते हैं Students, इसके against we have the other hypothesis, वो वाला जो हम उस सूरत में accept करेंगे अगर हम null hypothesis को reject कर दें and that other hypothesis is called the alternative hypothesis. As you now see on the slide, an alternative hypothesis is any other hypothesis which we are willing to accept when the null hypothesis H0 is rejected. The alternative hypothesis is customarily denoted by H1 or HA. For example, if our null hypothesis is H0 mu is equal to 62 inches, then our alternative hypothesis may be H1 mu is unequal to 62 inches or h1 mu is less than 62 inches. Students, ये जो दो examples मैंने अभी आपके सामने पेश किए of alternative hypotheses, इनमें एक फर्क है जो बड़ा important है. पहली दफा मैंने कहा कि हमारा alternative hypothesis ये हो सकता है कि mu is not equal to 62 inches. यानी सीधी सी बात है कि null ये कह रहा है कि mu is 62 और अल्टरनेटिव ये कह रहा है कि नो इट इज़ नॉट 62 इंचेस दूसरी मर्तबा मैंने जरा मुख्तलिफ बात कही है और मैंने कहा है कि नल तो यही है ना कि म्यू इज़ 62 इंचेस लेकिन अल्टरनेटिव ये है कि म्यू यानी द मीन हाइट ऑफ़ दिस पर्टिकुलर पापुलेशन ऑफ़ विमेन दैट मीन हाइट इज़ लेस दैन 62 इंचेस अब ये जो फर्क है इन दोनों alternative hypotheses में students ये हमें इस चीज के साथ relate करना है कि this tells us whether we are going to do what is called a two-tail test or are we going to do what is called a one-tailed test मैंने आपसे कहा था ना कि इसमें काफी सारे concepts और steps involved हैं आप इसमें आहिस्ता आहिस्ता एक-एक चीज को देखते जाइए and just do not panic or worry कि ये चीज समझ में नहीं आ रही just go along slowly but surely and inshallah you will understand this very interesting concept आइए अब मैं next important concept की तरफ चलती हूँ and that is the level of significance as you now see on the slide the probability 
of committing type 1 error can also be called the level of significance of a test. Students, ab sawal ye paida hota hai ke type 1 error se kya murad hai? Jis ki probability ki baat ho rahi hai? Jis ka naam hum keh rahe hai ke level of significance hai? Iske liye, I would like to draw your attention to all possible situations that you can have in a hypothesis testing procedure. As you now see on the slide, there are two situations as far as the actual truth is concerned and there are two situations as far as the decision that we are going to adopt is concerned. Dekhye, jo table aapke saamne hai, uska jo box head hai on the top that gives the two decisions, one of which will be made. Either you will accept H0 or you will reject H0. Lekin jo us is table ka stub hai, us mein aap dekhye, ke jo actual truth hai, that can be that the null hypothesis that you have hypothesized, it is actually true or the null hypothesis that you have hypothesized is actually false. Ab ye jo do situations aapko right side pe nazar aa rahi hai aur jo do situations aapko top pe nazar aa rahi hai, inko jab aap ikatha karte hai, to aapke paas char possible situations hai. Either H0 is actually true and you also accept H0. This means that you are taking a correct decision and there is no error. Uh, in other words, there is no mistake. Now, if you look at the bottom right hand corner of the table, you find this situation when H0 is actually false and based on your sample data, you also decide to reject H0. So, agar H0 waqai false tha, aur aap ne bhi yehi decide kiya ke H0 ko reject kar diya jana chahiye, to phir zahir hai ke once again, you are taking a correct decision and there is no error. But students, the other two cells of this table present situations where you are taking wrong decisions. Agar H0 actually such hai, lekin aap ye kehte hai ke I have to reject H0 because my sample value does not tally with what has been hypothesized. To aap ek aise, aise hypothesis ko reject kar rahe hai, which is actually true. And this is a wrong decision and this particular error is called type 1 error. Isi tarah se, if H0 is actually false, but you decide to accept H0 based on your data, then once again, students, you are taking a wrong decision. Ek baat dar haqeeqat sahi nahi thi, Lekin aap ne usko accept kar liya. This kind of an error is called type 2 error. And students, the probability of committing type 1 error is denoted by alpha, whereas the probability of committing type 2 error is denoted by beta. The first one, alpha, is also called the level of significance of the test. Students, hypothesis testing ke hawale se, jo mukhtalif concepts hai, unme se do hamne aaj discuss kar liye. The formulation of the null and the alternative hypothesis and the concept of the level of significance. Next time, we will be continuing with the concept of hypothesis testing and we will discuss various other concepts. In the meantime, I would like to encourage you to attempt quite a few questions pertaining to interval estimation. My best wishes to you and until next time, Allah Hafiz.